All righty, welcome to this week's edition of the 214 Sports Show, episode 26. Everything Dallas sports, everything you need. Every Thursday, 9 to 11, whatever time. I don't know whenever we <laughs> post. We always post at different times. But uh, again, welcome to the 214 Sports Show. I'm here with Joseph Duffy. We are one man short this week. Um, you know, rest in peace to my homie Courtney Machani for not being here. Hope he yeah. uh, hope he gets here next week. So, uh, um, anyways, um, let's get started with this episode. It's kind of going to be, I guess, a shorter episode since we have not too many, uh, not too many talking points again. Uh, the Mavs and Stars are both in season, obviously. The Super Bowl just ended. The Cowboys are going into their offseason. And, of course, the Rangers about to start up in a, in a week or two, report the spring training. They've already reported, um, but going to start spring training uh, within the next week or two. So, as we start off most of the time we'll do on today's date of Dallas history, this one's a recent one. We have February 15th, 2022. The Dallas Stars defeated the Colorado Avalanche for the one in Denver behind a two goal and two assist night from Joe Pavelski. He was responsible for all goals that night. Uh, Sagan and Robertson also scored a goal, and Ottinger had one hell of a game, one of his best games this season, probably one of the best, best games of his career. He had 46 saves on 47 attempts, 47 shots on goals, shots on goal from the Colorado Avalanche, high scoring team. They were even higher scoring, I think, in 2022. I, I believe that was the year they won the Cup. Um, the Avalanche still won the division, still won the World, or World Series. Stan, mm. Stanley Cup that day, that year. But it was still a great win and performance from the Stars. The Stars were outed in the first round that year to the Calgary Flames. But, you know, kind of kind of good. The series is tough, man. The Odd yeah. Odd your Classic. Yeah, no, he had a great series that playoffs. This was his first year where he kind of, I guess 2021 is more of his first year where he started to get uh, mm -hmm. no noticed, but this was his year where he really popped off as a perennial uh, NHL goalie. And so, you know, good good game for him, something that hopefully we can manifest into this next uh, upcoming month or two for Jake Ottinger as he's recovering from injury and is you know, been a little slow with his reaction time and net so far since coming back from his injury, struggling just a little bit. But some, you know, maybe maybe this game gives him, uh, you know, some some motivation. It's not a good rule. Not a good rule. I believe it's yeah. tied for his um his longest winning streak in his career as a goalie so far. But his whole team is rolling as it stands right now. So hopefully we can look good for Carolina coming up. But we'll get to that. Uh, in yeah, the we will. I'm not gonna. Not we'll talk a little bit more we'll about the stars right later. We're going to start off, before we get into the Mavs talk, though, we want to do the trivia. I always do this with the on today's date. Um, this one's kind of, since, you know, the stars right now, currently, currently first in the Central Division right now. Um, two, or I believe, yeah, two points ahead of the Colorado Avalanche, three points ahead of the Jets. The Jets have played less games, though. Um uh, but so far, looking good, clear, and first place in the Central Division. So my question was, what year was the last time the Stars won the Central Division? And this oh, is also, I, man, I know, you might, you might be quick for this it. one. I have zero idea. You might be quick for this one, but um, uh, it's also their only time they have been first in the Central Division by the end of regular season rankings. Uh, they moved to the Central Division in 2013, 2014, I believe, sometime that that those years. What was the reasoning for moving? Do you know why? Uh, I think it's – I don't know. I think it was more that balance it out. And, yeah, Vegas was going to come in in a couple years, and also oh. now they have Seattle, so they're adding teams to the Pacific Division. So mm -hmm. that's what they – I think they just realigned it just to make it look better as well. It does make more sense anyway geographically. Yeah, no, they they mm -hmm. are central team. There's more Western teams now for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do you want to answer now? Or do you want to wait? I'll answer now because I'm not gonna get. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> One time you said. One and only time. All right. I'm gonna guess the COVID season then. 2020. Has 2020. To be that yeah. Nah, because that's when we went nah. to the Stanley Cup. No. Nah. Nah. 
Remember, we played the Avalanche in that series, and we went the game seven. Technically, we're the away team in that game oh, okay. seven against Colorado. They won that division. They won the division almost every year. Was uh, it they... uh, twenty? Um, the year of the Klingberg goal. Was the it twenty? Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Not that year either. That series was crazy. Against it was twenty fifteen the twenty sixteen season. What? Where they finally got the first seed of the Central Division, lost in the second round, and a game seven to St. Louis. Yep. Um, tough, but they did get first. They did get first tonight yeah. that year. So um, that is the only year. Hopefully they can make it this year as well. Hopefully they yep. can win Hopefully. that Central Division. But it shows it shows for the Stars that it doesn't matter if they win the division or not. They're always a dangerous team in the playoffs. We talked a little bit about that last week. Mm-hmm. A little callback. A little callback. So... So friendly let's, viewers. let's do Purtle real quick. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of Purtle. Um, we do this every week. This is a uh, oh yeah. They actually updated their site, which is I, I hate their new updated site. Let me show you real quick. Hmm. Um, but again, just saying, Purtle is the world version for NBA players. You try to guess the NBA players. Can you see it now? Whoa! This looks so ridiculous. What is I know. this? I know. They made no a... way. They got an oil sponsor. Are you kidding me? That doesn't even make sense. Hey, man, I don't know what they were doing, man. I don't know what they were thinking. It looks pretty ugly, though. What is... I like the design. But let's get started, shall we? Guess a player. Mavericks. Ooh. I'm inclined to go Daniel Gafford the way he's been playing. Let's do it. Daniel Gafford. Yeah, let's start off with Daniel Gafford. Daniel. Wrong way to spell it, I guess. Yo, Gafford. What a right. gaff. Ooh, a tall player. Tall player who's young in the Western Conference. Not in the Southwest Division, though. This could be really... Oh, it's a king. I'm telling you. It's, you think Sabonis, it's a king? Sabonis, <laughs> no, he's, he's a Sabonis would probably be older, too. 25? King. Mm. Who was a Let young... Forward. Who's a young uh, 6'10 guy? Young well, center, 6'10. 7-footer type. Who's young? Carl Anthony Towns, but I don't know. I think they would count him more as a forward, too. 25? We could try Carl Anthony Towns. Do you think? No, nah, maybe, yeah. Maybe he is a little bit older than that, 26, 27 range. He's technically a center, too. So He was, he was drafted in, what, 2015? So, yeah, he's, more, he's older than 25. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they'd have an obvious one. Like that. It might be a Laker. You didn't think of any Lakers bigs? Besides Lakers AD? bigs? Jackson besides Hayes? I would do that one. He's tall. He's Jackson definitely Hayes. Seven one. The former Longhorn, Jackson Hayes. Former Longhorn. All right, oh, so we got a seven man. foot. He's only no, 23. Wait, he's 23, what? I didn't know that, man. But we do know he's part of the Nuggets, Trailblazers. I'm guessing DeAndre Aiden. You can do that one. Is that? Is that he's yeah, definitely I think 25. It's, I think he I may be DeAndre that. Aiden. He's been having some... Uh, some pretty crazy articles come up on him. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Man, I guess it is. is he has a low number, but. What is this? That's, <laughs> that's, that's, everything Thunder. checked off except for the team or the number. It's a Thunder player. You think it's a Thunder player? I could see being a Thunder player, too. Uh... <laughs> Can't think of anyone really seven foot for them. So they got someone at the deadline. I think they only got is, Hayward, though. The Poku Nuggets. St- is Poku still on their team? Poku. Ooh. Well, wasn't it Poku like last Look. week or so? We got Do you really think time. it's him again? I mean, bro. <laughs> trying to think of I... anyone on the Nuggets. Jokic has to be older than 25. Oh, yes, he's, he's definitely pushing 30. Older than 25. And then... Uh, Who's another big on... Who's this? The Timberwolves. Who's their backup on Na- the Nuggets? Nas Reed? Nas Reed? The GOAT? Is he 7 foot, though? I don't know. I don't think he's 7 foot. You don't think he's seven foot? I think he's seven. I feel foot. like he's six ten, six eleven, and they're definitely not going to give us the benefit of the doubt on that. We got a lot of I guesses, don't... so let's try it. Yeah, he's damn. Six he is six nine. What? Ooh, this, okay. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad, man. So we, not we the Trailblazers or the or the Timberwolves. So it has to be the Nuggets, Thunder, or um, who else am I forgetting in that division? The Jazz. So the oh, Jazz, is, is it Laurie? we haven't thought about the Jazz. Is it Lori? Lori, do we count him as a center? 
That's, no, no, that's no, no. It's, this, it's the oh. Walker guy. Walker something. Walker. Walker Kessler? Walker Kessler. Isn't, is he, Walker Kessler. isn't he older? I think he's or younger, I mean. He's definitely 25. I don't think he's younger. 25? Because he, he definitely 22. Plays. But it is the Jazz. We got the Jazz finally. This is bad, but we got to get somebody. I mean, we can't be, show the silver right if, if we get in trouble. It's got to be Lori at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lori marketing. Let's just try him real quick. Dude, what? Who Why else is on? Is the I don't know the Jazz roster, bro. <laughs> I knew they were going to count him as a center. Let's see the silhouette. We can't get this wrong. Yeah, I can't get it. I don't know who this is, dude. Oh, what the hell? What the hell? Okay. What? Looks like a white player. You know, I was about to say the same thing. I mean, <laughs> respectfully, I think that's a white guy. Just looking at the hair. Yeah. Oof. Who's white in a center for the Jazz? Other than Kessler, I can't and think Mark. of anyone on the Jazz, man. It's gotta be like a, he's gotta be at the bottom of the rotation, but he probably doesn't get much playing time. Yeah. Oh this, man, this is. Oh interesting. man, I feel bad for anybody watching the nose. This yeah, is bad, I feel like bro. that's gotta be really bad. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna just put some know. names in real quick. <laughs> Simone uh, Fontacheco just got traded to the Pistons from the Jazz. I don't think not I don't know Fernando. I might, I might have to tap. <laughs> I think we tap. I think we tap. Yeah, it's tough. Jazz minutes. roster. Oh man, it's not John Collins. Not Walker Kessler. Uh, Taylor. Is it? Is it Luca? The other Luca? It could be Luca Semanic. Oh, Semanic. Let's try him out real quick. Ooh, wrong one. Lucas. And it was not him. What? So they just have a bunch of white tall players. Who is this random guy in the jazz? <laughs> we have one more. Is it Omar Year 7? I think it's Omar Omar Year 7. I didn't know he was on the jazz. But that oh will my. be the correct answer. He is 26. Oh my God. Wow. We weren't guessing that, dude. We weren't guessing. Yeah. Thought he was white. <laughs> Where's he from? <laughs> That's tough. Oh, no, you're seven. I don't know. That's a good question. Let's look out. I know he was on the Heat. I don't know if you're asking what team he's from. He is a Turkish no, where basketball is he from? player. Oh, he's from Turkey, yeah. So. I was say he's a Turkish last name, I think. All right. Tough one. Well, tough one to start off. Well. <laughs> tough one to start off. Show. Let's finally get into the talks. It's been 13 minutes. That was a long portal. Um, so the Mavericks, um, they coming off a win against the Washington Wizards where they dominated in the fourth quarter. Didn't have too much success in the first half or the third quarter. Defense looked a little lackadaisical to effort at times. The turnovers, I think a season high for the Dallas Mavericks. They did have, um, let me see. Oops, wrong team. Okay, well, they're saying that the... Oh, this is a different game. I'm so sorry. Uh, but they did have a high number of turnovers. Um, so, just want to ask a little bit. I mean, after the Thunder game, after the Wizards game, seeing the new additions, I mean, what are what, what's your confidence level going into the rest of the season now with this new addition? Or these new additions? Man, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, Mr. Krulowitz. I don't know if you were, I don't know if you have the box score up right now. Just just look at that box score. Look at that, that right box score. It is beautiful. Look at the plus minuses all around. Look at the balance from the whole starting lineup and then from the bench as well. And dude, just look at how, you know, I don't want to be that guy, but D and P Dwight Powell. I mean, we're showing that we have at least some front court depth right now. Perfection. <laughs> it's perfection. <laughs> it is actual perfection. <laughs> but man, just look at the balance. I know that it wasn't, you know, Tim Hardaway's night. He was kind of putting up some bricks on the, from the bench. Yeah. But overall, this team, I mean, the fourth quarter presence, like we've talked about in the past, this team is very clutch. Uh, Kyrie and Luka down the stretch in the last 10 minutes are just dynamic. And we've seen it time and time again. Even um, – in the rough stretches of the beginning of this season, they've uh, been pretty good in the fourth quarter and trying to keep the game close. And so you saw it again with a team that was supposed to be a, a gimme win in the Washington Wizards. They weren't supposed to be like, you know, big competition coming up. But um, 
it was good that we can get this win. You take it, you know, how you can get it. You just get a win. And, uh, of course, it was a home win, of course, in Dallas and the American Airlines Center. You got to win these games. You can't let them slip away like you've seen in November and December and January games. So I'm glad that this team could get it done. I'm feeling very confident. Um, I'm just loving Gafford's play so far. 17 rebounds. 17. We have a glass cleaner. We have a glass cleaner. We we used to pray for days like this. Seriously, we used to pray. And, and I mean, look at the look at the minutes too. Only twenty four minutes. They oh stopped playing God. him in the second half. I think it was more of the fact that the defense was starting to get a little bit like days ago. They subbed him in for Kleba. Kleba did pretty good in that fourth quarter. Decent. He scored five points, two important buckets for the team. Um, but I mean, going wrong. back to that Thunder game real quick, beating them one hundred forty six to one hundred and eleven. Unfortunately, we did not watch that game, but I have seen the highlights, and I mean, jeez, man. I'm oh, saying right now, that's by far our best win of, of the season. The I think sure. the only win that could be even better was our Phoenix victory and on Christmas. Phoenix, yeah. But, I mean, just the way that we dominate the Thunder. I mean, you look at the top teams in the NBA, all right? You look at the Nuggets. We always lose to the Nuggets. I think we're 0-2 on them this year. The Timberwolves were 1-3 and on them this year. Um, the Thunder, we've also lost all of our games against the Thunder this year. I think we're 0 1 previously to them. The Celtics, 0 1. The Bucks, 0 2. The top teams right now always dominate. Cleveland, right now, who's become a top team in the league somehow, 0 uh, 1 <laughs> against them. Um, so the way that we're able to finally win one of those games, excluding the Minnesota victory, plus dominate the way that we did. I mean, just a masterpiece. By far, our best game of the season, coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, I don't think it was coincidentally, the first game sure hope. Sure that hope. we had our new two players, P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford. Um, you know, and I was I was totally ready once we got to the Washington game on Tuesday, uh, or on Monday, sorry, that I was ready to tweet out about the inconsistency again, uh, that the inconsistency was, was back. But they beat the inconsistent allegations, all right? <laughs> The Mavs did. They finally were able to pull through in that fourth quarter. Very good fourth quarter. Um, that, that was mostly pulled throughout the players who have been here before. Again, I mentioned Kluber had a couple of important buckets, but also that was most mainly orchestrated by Kyrie and Luka, of course. P.J. Washington wasn't too much of a factor, I think, in that game. I think he struggled a little bit. I hope he finds his grounding. I think he yeah. will. Uh, just a couple games in, so... Not too bad, but I mean, overall, two really two two good games. One of them was nasty, but the way that we were able to finally pull through in the end, um, and you know, get get rid of all the, uh, you know, the bad plays, the bad turnovers, clean up in that fourth quarter was huge. I think a big part of the struggles with Jason Kidd as a head coach is the lack of adjustments, and those were very clear adjustments in that fourth quarter. We were able to close out a lot cleaner. Um, we also fouled less. We turned the ball over less. Very, very good fourth quarter from Jason Kidd and Co. for that game. Very happy about it. Seven offensive rebounds. I'm still stuck on Gafford, man. Seven offensive rebounds. Are you kidding me? I it's mean, just, how crazy it is that we out. have to. It's crazy that we have to praise that because we've we've had such low standards from the center position. I mean, really, since the Tyson Chandler days. I don't want to. You know, disrespect solid measure or anybody, but I mean, we just haven't had a glass cleaner. This is what center plate is supposed to look like, especially in the modern NBA when you have a lot of guys shooting, um, overshooting threes. You're supposed to have, you know, a, a lot of second chance points at times based off the trajectory of the ball. And when this happened, this is what you need. You have more opportunities to, you know, put up second chance points and you boost your chances, chances of winning. So, I mean, when you have guys that actually go after and uh, crash the glass, like Daniel Gafford, it improves your chances of winning. You need that. Mm -hmm. You need that for a team in this modern era. So, I love to see it overall. No, I agree. I think, and also, I think a lot of people understand that with the Mavericks Nation, man. I think the, uh, I think the crowd against Oklahoma City was one of the most electric. I know Jeff Skinner mentioned it. He mentioned it uh, in the during the broadcast. He said that this was one of the most electric games this season from the crowd. I think, you know, 
uh, you know, watching the Mavs for years and then finally seeing plays like when Gafford just like, when Luca yeah. robbed it to him and Gafford just like grabbed it over three players, kept tipping it up, battling for it, got it, right. came down with it, and one, one layup. And that shot right there. just went yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, they feel I mean, it, bro. No, yeah, yeah we, we definitely feel it. We definitely feel the difference of having a really, you know, a crash the board uh, center, big man. It's definitely huge. So, um, mentioning that, though, we did have another trade acquisition that could have possibly happened hmm. with Daniel Gafford, a.k.a. Kyle Kuzma. I know, uh, I, I know Spencer Dinwiddie said something a little bit kind of shady about the Mavs last week. Um, I don't want to hear it. Which, you know, I, you could go either way. Um, you know, I guess I guess you'd rather pick the, the fan base that's going to call you den shitty and probably ruin your career mm. over the fan base that loves you. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm just saying, if the Mavs, be, you know, Mavs being the Lakers in the playoffs would be so amazing. Would be awesome. Would love it. I don't know what he was. He was kind of tweaking with those comments. But, you know, overall, <laughs> I, don't, I was having a hard time when I saw that Kuzma news earlier. I yeah, was wondering if it was true. Kuzma. I was wondering if it was true because, as you're going to get to, like they were saying that he could have been part of this deal to come here, but instead um, elected to stay in Washington because he he is um, confident in what was brewing in Washington and thinking that you know they have potential for the future. And I was like, really, dude? Like Washington, nine and forty four, Washington. I mean, I understand having confidence. I mean, I don't think that. Um, uh, he he can make a big difference for this team. Like I was saying, I would have loved to have him, but overall, I don't think that it's a, a terrible thing that we didn't end up getting him. It's not a deal breaker. But I just I was confused by those comments when he said that. It made me think that maybe he was kind of lying because when you say that, I, it's just not believable, man. Nobody nobody's hyping up Washington yeah. like that. Nobody <laughs> thinks that they have potential. I don't know what he's seeing. I really don't know what he's talking about. It's just a weird comment to come out of nowhere and. Well, yeah, I heard, I heard people were saying that it's because he and Jordan Poole just love playing AAU basketball against NBA teams. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I mean, he just chunks up threes, man. I think he was, what, two for two for eight against the Mavericks last, last night? One for seven, actually. One for I mean, seven against the Mavs last night at the, the three-point range. He shot a couple deep ones, too. Um, one rough one for Jordan Poole <laughs> uh, in that game last night, too. I mean. Yeah. One yeah. for twelve from the field, one for six from three point range. Only three points. Very rough game Not for that looking duo. too good. He only scored his first his only points in that first possession of the third quarter. He had zero points in the first half, scored in the first possession of the third quarter. Looked like he was about to turn up and then he did not score for the rest of the game. Mm. But yeah, I mean going back to, you know, Dinwiddie and Kuzma, I think no one's really smiting the Mavs that we think. You know, I think this is all overblown proportion. Same with the Grant Williams story that I don't think we've talked about. Hmm. And moving the Lucas, the Tatums, and you know, becoming a you know, this asshole in the in the locker room or whatever. I don't think that was true either. Some of those I mean, some of those seem a little fabricated. He seemed like a chill yeah, guy, but yeah, that one I, video of when he's like on his phone and Kyrie's like, What are you doing, man? Like <laughs> yeah, I might look like a fool and stuff on the bench, but you know what? I, I I wish the best for Grant. I don't want anything terrible to happen to him. I appreciate his time here. It didn't go the way he, you know, expected it or anticipated to go from free agency. But you know, overall, I wish the best for. Him At least Charlotte. he got the WNBA uh, players' number, though. At least yeah, he did right. get that. Sat two, sat two. <laughs> so. It's a shame he has to leave right when it looked like they were hitting it off. <laughs> Dang. Oh, hey, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't think Shara has a WNBA team. So, truly unfortunate, yeah. man. Luca banished him. Banished him. Lou GM. Lou GM. Just one last question I want to ask you before we move on to the Dallas Stars and the other teams within the Metroplex. Um, you know, we obviously have a couple injured players still out right now. Hopefully, they'll be healthy. By the time we come back from the All Star break, uh, we have Derek Lively and Dante Exum still hurt. Um, and they haven't really played with the new additions. I'm a little interested to see how these rotations are. I want to ask on your opinion, do you think that Daniel Gafford should start over Lively? Do you think Lively should start over Gafford when he comes back? What's the, you know, what, what would you do? Going back to what we were talking about last week, a little bit after the trades, us personally, not through um, the podcast, mm -hmm. but 
this is such a great situation for the Mavs. You need moments like this because now guys are going to push for playing time. Uh, mm -hmm. And just think about two weeks ago where we were wondering who we could get. And, you know, we were in, in um, kind of a bind in the front court. But now you have guys who are capable of being starting fives on your team. It's a really tough predicament for Jason Kidd. He's going to have a really head-scratching uh, situation for him. But I think I would keep it rolling right now with Gafford. Um, I know he's been crashing the glass a lot, but that doesn't mean that he has to, you know, take a big chunk of the minutes. I do think that Lively deserves to get his part. And, you know, he's banged up a lot, but he's a young spark that can come off the bench for this team. He can have his starts at times just based on the matchups. But I think that overall Gafford, I mean, he's balling out right now. He has played, like, pretty much – he's played pretty excellent since he's gotten here, even though, you know, technically a, a minus six according to plus minus stats. But – that can be deceiving at times. He only played 24 minutes, like you said, and didn't play as much in the second half. But um, overall, I think I would start Gafford just for rebound sake. I think Lively will get to that point eventually where he's a better rebounder, but I think you just got to roll with, with what you got right now. And like I said, it's a good predicament to be to have right now to have, um, to have all these options that can fight for playing time. And Dante Exum, too. He's going to come off the bench mm -hmm. for sure. And that's yeah. going to be a thing that's going to be interesting that see him split minutes between, you know, um, Prosper and Hardaway and DJJ. So, man, Richard, yeah. your thoughts. I mean, it's it's interesting. I think it's, um, you know, I, I told you actually in this talk that in a perfect world, I think Gafford and Lively should start together. That would be dominating. Yeah. But That'd be awesome. Can't do that now in the small ball era. Um, but I mean, looking at these statistics between the two, Gafford obviously is way better, you know, statistically than Lively right now. His production is better than him. But I'm starting to think maybe, maybe Gafford goes into that second union when Lim Limely Lively comes back. Sorry, uh, just because I know that the statistics with him with Luca on the court is really good, um, and that Luca benefits with Lively a lot. Obviously, a small sample size with Gafford right now. We don't know. Lucas been doing really, really well with Gafford too. But just because of that, I think you got to pair Luca with Ga Lively. Irving kind of is more of our, you know, I, I heard Mark Farrell call it this as well. I think a couple days ago, Harry Irving's kind of the quarterback of the second unit. He plays a lot with the second unit with Jaden Hardy, with Derek Jones Jr. Uh, you know, with the second unit players a lot. Uh, putting him with Gafford could be a huge help, something that can clear the lane for Kyrie for his ISO. Um, but I, I think there's really no wrong decision with this, you know? Seriously. I don't think there's really a wrong decision. I think in a perfect world, they should start together. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. Yeah, you can't play a Twin Tower lineup in the modern game, which yeah. sucks because I actually yeah. like that. I would love that if one of them was like an elite shooter, or at least had a good mid-range game. But yeah. since neither one of them are really like mid-range guys and they rely on the floater and the putback game, I mean, you just can't start both of them. It, it's good to have at least one of them come off the bench and be a spark. So I don't think – I think in the end, Mavs Perimeter fans merchants. win with this. Yeah, Perimeter <laughs> merchants. Mavs fans <laughs> win with this situation yeah. anyways. I love this. Interior merchants, sorry. But, yeah, I mean, also, yeah, Gafford, 3.2 fouls per game in 26 minutes on his average this year. Derek Lively, 3.1 fouls per game in his 26 minutes as well. So both of them both struggle with foul trouble. You can't really pick either or the other to be in that starting lineup to gain additional minutes because both of them at the end of the game will probably have, like, four or so fouls. So, I, I mean, have... that wholesome press conference, bro, after the Thunder yeah. game. Yeah, it shows that guys want to be here, man. They love to play with Luca and Kyrie. This is a good vibe that you know Mark Cuban has laid the foundation for that Dirk Nowitzki eventually, you know, extended and the culture they've set around here. Even with you know the controversy that other players have had, um, that have you know that have left eventually, like Rajon Rondo and some other guys that have, you know they've been like some Lamar sneaky Adam, Derek Lamar Fisher, Adam, yeah. Derek Fisher. But anyways, but. Overall, the culture of the Mavs is nice for guys. They do want to come here, which is nice to hear. So, PJ, PJ Washington coming home, awesome to see. Sounds like he enjoys it so far. But Daniel Gafford, just that whole press conference, I watched all of it. And he just seemed like he just was um, so amazed at how Luka was on the floor and how cohesive they played. And it looked like he's been a Mav almost like for five years, like a vet on the Dallas Mavericks. So, it's cool to see the guys are kind of 
you know, acclimating to this culture and his team very quickly. Yeah, and I'll always say, I'll always say that Mark Cuban is the best owner in the NBA, or the best governor. I believe they call them governors, um, but the best governor in the NBA. Um, <laughs> you know, best best GM. Governor's yeah. Best. Eh, you know, not the best front office guy, but not nice culture guy. Nice guy, culture guy, guy. friendly amazing guy, amazing top of the art governor. So, um, <laughs> governor is kind of is a crazy, <laughs> crazy term governor. for governor. <laughs> but uh, let's move on to the Dallas Stars real quick. Just a quick little recap of the games that they've had. Um, just uh, I know that they we are filming this on Tuesday evening, right before they play the Hurricanes at home. That is a very, very important game. I hope that they get the win. My prediction is that they do get the win in overtime. I say Duchesne gets another game-winning goal. Hopefully that comes true when this episode's uploaded on Thursday. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about Montreal um, on Saturday. Early, early game at 12 o'clock. Um, end of the road streak, couple games. Um, uh, couple games on the road there following the All-Star break. Um, and on their last game, they were able to beat the team that beat them earlier. Well, first game of the year in 2024, January 2nd. I can't believe I remember that date. Um, Holy. Against Montreal, we lost at home. Um, so getting this win, very good for us. Also very good since the Central Division race is so tight right now. Um, I really do like Tyler Sagan right now. He's been huge for our, you know, plus units on the forward sides. Um, his production has just gone up like crazy uh, this game or this year. Um, 19 goals scored this year compared to 21 and 24 the previous two years um, following his injury, injury riddled year in 2021. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, obviously the season's not over. He's probably going to finish bearing, you know, hope, you know, not getting hurt or anything. He will finish with more goals. Uh, one of his best since, you know, the 2018-2019 season. Big looks for that. I wish the first unit could be just a little bit better. Um, one for 10 in power plays the last few games now. They need to figure it out, obviously. Um, their penalty kill has been pretty good, though, recently. I do like how the penalty kill has been. The penalty kill has always been a pretty decent strength for the Stars in these last few years. Um, but overall, I just really need to focus on getting better on that power play as of right now. And I think that's really our true weakness as of right now. And that is like crazy to think about right now because Pavelski, Hintz, and Robertson, I mean, one of the best lines in hockey. One of the best lines in hockey. I can't believe how talented that group is. Um, they'll get their group back eventually. Robertson, again, kind of having a down year with scoring. Um, but overall, still a very good player. Still, I believe, leads the team in assist. So, still doing good on that side. Um, but, yeah, that's really all I have for the Stars. They still have their trade deadline, so we'll see if they'll make any additions like the Mavericks to improve their team. They don't really need to do it like the Mavericks. The Mavericks desperately needed uh, <laughs> some trade acquisitions. But the Stars, not as much, but there's still room for depth. So, anyways, that's really all I got for the Stars. Do you want to add anything? Hopefully keep the streak rolling like I was saying, but it's good to see Tyler Sagan get back in the groove. You know, the former uh, big-time player here, but – you know, he's kind of taking a back seat to the young guns that have been on the team in Rupe and Robertson. But it's good to see him uh, have such a big game against Montreal. So hopefully this team get another signature win in the AAC against Carolina, who's been a very solid team overall in the year. But hopefully this freaking get, get, uh, keep uh, building on because Ottinger, he's um, having, like I said, in the games, having his longest streak in his career. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully they can keep it going. That's all I got. I'm getting better, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish Courtney was here. The, the been, he would have been rolling his eyes at those comments right there. <laughs> nah, you, don't, you don't know about that puck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would love to see his uh, talking points this week. Can't wait for them next week, Courtney. Yeah. Um, so we'll go to uh, the Cowboys real quick, going into the offseason. A couple of interesting quotes that have come, come out recently for the Cowboys. Real quick, though, you know, 49ers, 
Too bad, man. Too bad. Oh well. Oh no. Oh no. Is that overtime rules? You lost. Missed a blocking no. assignment. Not the Niners. Oh no. You guys Not lost the game. Any. They could have easily been won. First time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess y'all won't. I guess y'all won't surpass us in Super Bowls. I guess you won't get number six. I guess we still have oh, a more yeah. recent Super Bowl win. The Niners yeah. are behind us. Yeah, I will. Dang. Oh, I can't, tough, yeah. tough loss. Tough hey, loss. I'll bring up the pass for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I oh, mean, man. you know, I don't want to really talk too much about the Super Bowl. Shout out Post Malone, though, you know, wearing the Rubbing Dallas Cow- Bendinucci hat, re- cowboy jacket. I know there was a video of him uh, with Brittany Mahomes after after party where she rips man, it off and concede, puts him on a chief. Bro. Why did he do that? You know, that's really depressing. Kind of almost Damn. ruined my day, but honestly, <laughs> I would do it too. I don't know, I, you know, Brittany, man, I don't want her pouring champagne on me or anything. You know, <laughs> might as well do whatever she tells me to do. I don't know. If she, she might bite me. I don't know. Stand on business, TJ. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, you know, maybe this wakes up Jerry Jones and all of them. Like, look, our number one celebrity <sighs> fan just absolutely disrespected us in public. Oh, my Lord. Wait, this right. is the lowest moment in Cowboys history for sure. Him taking off the Cowboys jacket and donning a, a Chiefs jacket. I think I think we need to normalize this more. Maybe this actually wakes up Jerry Jones and is like, man, maybe they don't f with me no more. <laughs> if it took him this long, geez, I feel bad for him. Please. And speaking of Jerry, they're, they're saying the insiders have said that he's actually desperate to win a Super Bowl. Um, just uh, just another cycle in the uh, in the Jerry Jones saga in the Jerry Jones cycle. He's desperate. I he will says. do anything to win a Super Bowl for this team. <laughs> I would do anything to win a Super Bowl. Just you know, I got Dak and my guys. I, <laughs> I got Dak Bowl. and my guys, and you know, we love the players that we have here. I don't we know love if the you coach saw that, that we um, have here. I don't know if you saw that story. I don't know if it was fraudulent or not, but we thought Mike Zimmer was already hired. Um, yeah, like two days ago, but apparently Rex Ryan is like, I haven't heard a word that it was, you know, put through yet. And so he was like explaining his position in the pregame of the Super Bowl. Like, you know, I could be a, a nice voice for this team. A nice, uh, I think they already are like on the brink of being in the Super Bowl, like as he was pointing as he was on the field. Um, but, you know, overall, Mike Zimmer, I don't know what to think about this. I was saying I was content with it last week, but I don't know. I mean, He's, it's he's an old. interesting hire for sure. He is old. It's also just another, you know, another guy who's been in the system, knows our system. And, you know, a lot of that's a plus. You know, mm-hmm. we talk about this a lot, too. The Cowboys are a very loyal organization. They love mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, they, they, they're they not as, as tentative with, you know, trading or firing people. Um, and they also love bringing players back. Um, and so, you know, it's interesting. It's something that you know. It makes it, it makes you think that you know nothing's going to change, though. That's the only problem. Yep. That's the only problem. It's not an outsider voice that could change something, and that's what worries me just a little bit. I don't know if that's what was worrying you, but that's what worries me. Well, when your GM is also the president and is also the owner of the team, I mean, you you kind of get a cycle of the same yeah. stuff coming around. And the thing is, I don't know if Mike Zimmer is going to bring, like, this youthful uh, type of energy to the team. Because he's usually a very, like, you know, even-keeled guy. He's he's not going to be pushed around. So I don't want to act like, you know, Jerry Jones is going to, like, put his foot in his throat and stuff and, like, force him to do stuff. Because Mike Zimmer's always been a guy who's very outspoken. He says what's on his mind. Um, only problem is, I mean, I don't think there's anybody else on the market who could have been better. So I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Is there anybody you think, a coordinator who we could have looked for? Because I don't think, you know, Mike McDonald, who went to the Seahawks, he was he, – we didn't have a chance at him. He was obviously going to be a head coach. But, yeah. like, this guy, Mike Zimmer, he's, I believe, in his early 60s. Could he be a, a valid voice for this team? I don't know. I don't know. That is a good question and an answer that I don't really have, to be honest. I think that's mm-hmm. a – I mean – it's just going to have to be a wait and see moment for sure. I don't think there's really, you know, I'm I'm not too familiar with Mike Zimmer's game, so you know maybe <laughs> I have to apologize, like Shaq. <laughs> but 
Um, you're unfamiliar with this game. <laughs> so, uh, next next topic for the Cowboys, real quick. NFL Insider also said that Dak can demand almost whatever he wants. Um, apparently, he has a lot of leverage within the organization. Um, being here eight years, um, I guess that's the only really statistic you can bring out about him. That's what I'm saying. Like, what what um, leverage? What leverage? Like, I know he's the QB. Really, yeah, I mean, you go, you go, buddy. <laughs> like he go, had, I know he's, I know he's a vet, but like, <laughs> do we have a name on this NFL insider, or just did it just say NFL insider? Just NFL insider. He doesn't want to say his name. Put obviously. your name on there, dude. Don't be anonymous. <laughs> Put your name on that. I mean, we can say like you know he's been here on this team for a while, but he hasn't won anything. He's only has, he only has two playoff wins. I mean, can he yeah. really demand what he wants like that? I don't know. Uh, it's a very – I think it's also kind of a misleading title. I don't know if it's really – I think that's more saying like, hey, if he wants to ask for $40 million, he's going to get $40 million just because the Cowboys don't want to make that switch. I think it's kind of what they're saying. I think, I think that's – you know, it's kind of a misleading title with the fact that it's – you know, they're trying to put Dak in a bad light. Obviously, people are not going to take it well saying, oh, look, he, he could get whatever he wants. Then he can just throw, you know, two picks, you know, shit the bed against the Packers – a wild card yeah. round. Um, I don't know. I think that's more the fact, you know, but, you know, this is, if you know, if it is really not misleading, demanding whatever he wants, really, that's, you know, that's something Mahomes can have. You know, that's not something that Dak Prescott can have. That's not something that even De- Brock Purdy could have, you know, going into his first Super Bowl in his second year as a quarterback. I don't even think he could demand whatever he wants yet, you right. know. I think you have to be established, and I think you have to prove that you can, you know, win in those big games. Dak obviously has struggled to do that in his career. Um, and by no means, just real quick, just real quick, I want to say I'm a big supporter of Dak Prescott. I love him. I, I really want him to succeed. But the facts are facts. He hasn't succeeded. So, you know, I just think it's a misleading title. And I'm also just a little, little disappointed that this is what we're doing again. I feel like every year we always have some kind of dispute with a player contract dispute that ends up going, you know, in the player's favor, or if not, you know, they end up leaving. So, um, but anyways, let's move on to our last topic real quick, the Texas Rangers. Uh, just a real quick, fun little question since they're starting up soon. How many wins do you think that this Rangers squad wins this year? They had 92 the previous year. Don't really know if you could say they improved. <laughs> but, you know, most of the rushs are still there. I still think losing Mitch Garver was huge. If you look at the playoff highlights of the World Series run this past November, you will realize how important Mitch Garver was to this team. And so I think that's still a huge loss, but... Nevertheless, you go ahead. Drop drop your win total. Well, I'm going to build it up, but it's crazy to think that we even um, got those 90-plus wins because there was a point in the season, you know, especially the Houston series, where we got outscored 39-10. to 10. It didn't even feel like we were going to have 90 wins. And mm-hmm. so it's good that we got that. And, of course, the World Series, we're in such a nice position right now as Rangers fans. I don't want to get complacent, but, man, like, I understand the odds are in our favor, especially, you know, in baseball, considering that there's not a lot of back-to-back champions. You just saw in the NFL a few days ago the first back-to-back champion in 20, uh, 20, 20 years. years. They said Literally. 20 years. Yeah, mm-hmm. 20 years. And it's even more hard to do, or well, more difficult, I guess I should say, um, to do in uh, the MLB. We haven't had a back-to-back champion since the uh, Yankees dynasty in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I believe – since 01, 02, some 22 something years, I guess you could say. But um, it's a good position for the Rangers because it shouldn't be as much added pressure to defend your title. You don't have to keep um, saying, oh, this team chokes in the clutch anymore. You just won the World Series. You don't have to say this team doesn't have pitching uh, down the stretch because, I mean, we still have the same roster. Now, I'd love for us to add Jordan Montgomery, and I think that if we add him, it'll definitely be a – I would say a plus three, four wins in the win total. So if we do sign Jordan Montgomery, which I do believe we will in the Mm -hmm. long run, because I don't think anybody else wants him. He prefers Texas. He said he wants, we've heard that he wants Texas because he was just on the World Series winning team. We'll get the Grom probably around early August. 
Scherzer will eventually come back around June, probably early July. I think with that roster, albeit as old as it is, and the rotation as injury riddled as it is, I think this team will make the playoffs again. Um, as far as division winners, I think that's up in the air. The Astros definitely did get a even better bullpen than they already had. I think this team can get about 95 wins. That's my guess. 95 wins. 95. Nice. Because mm-hmm. guess what? That's exactly what I was going to say. I think it is 95. I, I think they get to about that time. I think the bullpen improves this year, and I think that that helps this team um, win a couple more games that they were not able to lo- or able to win um, last year. Only a three-win difference, though. I don't think they get the 100 wins this year. I'll say why. Um, first of all, expect, and I don't, I'm not really expect, but don't be angry if the Rangers struggle at the first part of the season. I think this is a very, I think this is something that could very easily happen. Um, the Rangers without Jacob DeGrom, without Tommy Maul, without, uh, Max Scherzer, all coming back from Tommy John, uh, Scherzer's coming back from a disc surgery. Um, so, I mean, you know, you don't have those three perennial, uh, pitchers, uh, three perennial starters, uh, for that first part of the season. Um, and also again, I think there's a lot of, you know, I, I know that this is kind of like a, a myth, you know, but the world series hangover, sometimes that happens with teams. It doesn't happen every year, but it does happen with teams a lot. They start to struggle at the start of the year, the year after winning a world series, you know, I would, I would be, you know. I think it's completely predictable to see the Rangers struggling and even falling a little bit behind, you know, either Seattle or Houston or even both at the start of the season going into the All-Star break. Um, you know, I think Houston reloaded pretty strongly this offseason. Of course, adding Josh Hader. The Mariners have made some moves too. They also signed Mitch Garver. Um, so, I mean, you know, both those teams are looking pretty strong. This division's going to be pretty competitive, I think, um, between those three teams. And I would not be surprised to see them lose a couple of those games in April and May and then go back and w- start winning those games later in the season, kind of opposite of what it was last year, um, and pull up the 95 wins or so, hopefully win the division. I think that does win the division. I think the Astros, you know, you're starting to see a little cracks in their dynasty. I think they're still a really strong team, obviously, but you're seeing those, you know, the road struggles that they had last year. Um, And, you know, kind of some of the offensive problems, the injury problems that they're having with their aging stars and also Jordan Alvarez. So we'll see, you know, yeah, I know it's, it's Uh, that name, (laughs) the name sends chills down my spine. You remind any Rangers fan about Jordan Alvarez, they become like days ruined. Jesus Christ. Just remember that Jordan Alvarez exists and now I'm I'm angry. Monster. At least show has gone from the division. But, um... Overall, I mean, it's such a weird ask, but I just want to see the Rangers get 100 wins eventually. They still have never done it in the That'd history really of the franchise. Cool, man. It would be awesome. It always looks cool in the awesome. resume. But, you know, it means nothing if you don't, you know, do something within the postseason. And gladly. we the thing without the ring. Right. And we gladly got the ring last season. So, in this division, I still think, you know, it's up in the air. I think it's going to be the same race as before. I don't think the Angels – will um be involved in it as we've seen them be in the past decade, especially with Shoei Otani now leaving. But it's mm-hmm. gonna be, you know, Mike Trout and Ron Washington, God bless his soul, uh managing that team in Anaheim. It's gonna be a race between the Astros, Mariners and Rangers, as we've seen in the past two years now, two or three years. So I think that um this Rangers team can get ninety five or so wins. I just I sure hope this bullpen really is living up to the hype that they kinda have if you want to call it hype. But this should be way better than last mm-hmm. year and it came together in the end but hopefully uh spores and leclerc can hold it down in the back end and and our new middle relievers and david robertson can at least you know improve this team because i don't want i don't know if i can keep mm-hmm. going through the heartache we saw a certain the part of the season with the, the the blown saves man it's just well, it was the, too a much. lot of the blown saves that we had from last year will smith will smith and you know part of chapman in that second half both yeah both those players gone will smith though three years in a row winning world series maybe we try <laughs> to get him in the trade a, trade deadline just to keep that red going you know um yeah. but yeah i guess i guess much like the stars the rangers are a team that you know it doesn't really matter where they're seated in the playoffs they can pr- they have proven that they will you know, play good no matter where they are, no matter if they are in the division or they win the division or not. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
I think that's really going to end it with the Rangers. They're, you know, it's tough to tough to go back to back. You mentioned it. You know, last time that a team's gone back to back, I believe it was two thousand. Um, I don't know if you remember back in MLB Network uh, before the Diamondbacks went to the World Series against the Rangers. They were asking if history would repeat since they won in two thousand eleven. Not the nine eleven part though. That's what they. That's what they. That's what they said. I saw. Oh, I forgot about that. You remember I forgot about that? that? There we go. Yep. I thought that was your joke at first. I was like, dang, bro. No, but seriously, like, I remember they put that, and I was like, no, are they you put that in me? The, the, NF, or the MLB Network, they asked, will history repeat itself? Will the Diamondbacks win another World Series? Because they beat the Yankees in 2001. And then he goes, not the 9-11 part. The, uh, oh, oh, my God. The disadvantages of going live. <laughs> Dude, live TV is special, man. It's special. <laughs> yeah, you know, Chris Broussard has proven that this year as well, too. <laughs> is the mayor retired? <laughs> I could not believe he said that. Oh my gosh! Crazy moments on air this year, this past year for uh, live wow. television, live sports television. So, anyways, yeah. though, that will do it for this episode. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you know, we we love the we love the talk Dallas sports, and uh, we hope you guys are enjoying the content that we give out. Um, you know, you can follow the 214 Sports Show on YouTube and Spotify at 214 Sports Show. It'll also be the same handle for Twitter slash X, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll post them, you know, we'll post uh, some highlights from the podcast there. We'll also post some of our thoughts and some analysis from the games throughout the week for Dallas Sports. Um, so, you know, go ahead and follow us there. For our personal social medias, um, you can follow me on Instagram at tj.krillowitz. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter slash X on TJ underscore Kurowitz. Both of those links will be down in the description. Same with our uh, company, you know, same with the 214 Sports Show. Anyways, Joseph, you want to go? Yeah, I'll cool. go uh, the company. But yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, J underscore Duffy 99. That's again, J underscore Duffy 99. It should be the same on um on Twitter or X right now. So same one for those platforms. Also our third member of the show. He's uh, currently uh, not here right now. Courtney, our prayers are with you, but he's uh, dealing with a personal matter right now. You can follow him on Instagram and Twitter on Instagram. You can follow him at C lives the life. As he says, it is C lives the life is spelled like Clive. If you want to know how to spell just C <laughs> lives D A life. And you can follow him at C underscore Machani on Twitter also. So, that's all I got from my side. All righty. So that will do it for this episode. Um, again, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. And uh, have a great weekend.